What's up, prepsters? I've been asked to hold office hours for the Pig Pimple School of Wizardry stuff. I've been doing some teaching for them, especially with proportions that are useful for shrinking and expanding spells. I've really developed a personal connection with each student. Uh, Professor McCarley and uh, Yes. Uh, what was your name again? Uh, a Bumbledore. Oh, yeah. How could I forget? Your name was quite wizardy. Yes, yes. Todd Bumbledore. <laughs> okay, I take it back. What's the problem, Todd? Well, uh, I put a shrinking spell on my hat. You see this? And when I cast an enlargement spell to get it back to normal, it keeps coming out, well, weird. Ready? Enlarge you! <laughs> Is that wizard speak or just Italian? See? Where am I supposed to wear that? <laughs> My foot? No. <laughs> <laughs> foot hat! You shut your <laughs> mouth, Don Squeezly, or I'll turn you into a fumble grump. You too, Calliope Granger. <gasps> I didn't say anything. Control Zebeldorf. I see what's going on here. You're making the hat bigger, but you aren't preserving the relationships between its various parts or its proportions. A, a pro potion. Oh, have I only been dealing with amateur potions until now? No, 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 no. A proportion is essentially a comparison of two ratios. What? That's preposterous. <laughs> here, I'll show you. Would you use a measuring spell to tell me how tall and how wide the hat is? Mmm, tape measure Ario. Hmm. It's five inches tall and uh, three inches wide. Perfect. So, if we want to grow the hat and not have it turn out too wide or too thin, we need to preserve that relationship by setting up a proportion. Here's how you do it. First off, let's set up a fraction with the ratio of its original height and width, five over three. Now, how tall do you want the hat to be once it's big again? about um, 20 inches should do. Great. So we write out an equal sign, and then on the other side, we put 20 over W. W why not W over 20? Great question, Todd. There are many different ways you can write out a proportion, but one thing needs to hold true. The structure of the fractions on each side need to match each other. Let's look at what that means. On the left, we have a fraction with height over width. So. We need the same thing on the right. If we compare a height over width fraction to a width over height fraction, we won't get a correct answer. Alternatively, we could set this up as height of the small hat over height of the large hat. And on the right side, we need to set up width of the small hat over width of the large hat. Either of these is fine, as long as both fractions match each other. This is all well and good, but now what? We don't know how to solve this complicated incantation. Just throw up the X. But I didn't eat any X. Anytime you have fractions on either side of an equal sign, just throw up the X and cross multiply. Multiply the numerator on the left by the denominator on the right, and the denominator on the left by the numerator on the right. Draw an X like this to indicate what needs to be done. Then. Set those two products equal to each other and solve. Oh, okay. I think I get it. Here, this will help you remember. <laughs> if you've got equal fractions and don't know what to do next, it's as easy as pie. Just throw up the X. Throw up the X? Throw up the X. Throw up the X. Throw up the X. Proportions can be troubling, I ain't gonna lie. But throw up that X and cross multiply. Throw, throw up, up the, the X. 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 Oh, thank you for that mystical chant. You're welcome. In this case, five times W is five W, and 20 times three is 60. So we have five W equals 60. Divide both sides by five, and then we get W equals 12. Then we always have to make sure to put the right unit on our number. So the width of Todd's new hat should be 12 inches. Oh, oh, oh. Well, so talk about taking the W. <laughs> Proportion. 
Oh, that's incredible. You, sir, are a magician of the highest order. Why, thank you. And uh, actually, sir, you are indeed on fire. Oh, fire fact. This is some powerful mathematic I'm about to unveil and is another way to throw up the X. So, let's say we have an equation A over B equals X over Y, and we want to solve for Y in terms of the other variables. We could go ahead and cross multiply and get AY equals BX, and then divide both sides by A to get Y equals BX over A. Or, we can move pieces diagonally along the lines of the X. When we have a proportion, we can move any numerator to the denominator on the other side of the equal sign, and any denominator to the numerator on the other side of the equal sign, without changing the equation. So, if we want to solve for y, we simply move each piece one at a time like chess. y moves to the top left, and a moves to the bottom right, and b moves to the top right. Thus, y equals bx over a. You can move pieces diagonally or cross multiply, but either way you get the same answer, and either way you throw up the X. You, can, you can't blow it out. You cannot blow it out through the screen. Now, there's even more that proportions and their close relative ratios can do for wizards like you. Do tell. Have any of you ever struggled with converting the units on your potions? Oh. Don't get me started. If I had an enchanted gold coin for every time I had to convert a potion from newt's eyes to butterfly tongues, I'd have uh, a, a, a lot of enchanted gold coins, which would be unfortunate because they have a bad exchange rate. Oh, proportions. Ratios can help you out with that. It's a method called dimensional analysis that we can use to convert something from one type of unit to another. Let's say that a recipe requires two kilograms of sloth dandruff for every 100 milliliters of pond water, but your local apothecary only sells in grams per liter. If I had an enchanted gold coin for every time- We can do that using dimensional analysis. First off, let's write out our rate, two kilograms per 100 milliliters. Now. Let's multiply that by the conversion factor for grams per kilogram, which is 1,000 to 1. A conversion factor is simply a ratio that allows us to convert from one unit to another. Notice that we have grams over kilograms here. That's because we want the kilograms to cancel out. And if we have kilograms on the top and bottom, they'll cancel out. If we multiplied by kilograms over grams, we'd end up with kilograms squared over grams, which is just a mess. Next. We want to multiply by 1,000 milliliters per one liter to convert to liters. Again, we do this to eliminate the unit that we don't want anymore, milliliters. So, we should now have two kilograms per 100 milliliters times 1,000 grams per one kilogram times 1,000 milliliters per one liter. Multiply across and we get two times 1,000 times 1,000 or two million grams over 100 times one times one or 100 liters. Reduce the fraction by dividing by 100 and we get 20,000 grams of sloth dandruff per one liter of water. That's a lot of sloth dandruff. Where am I supposed to get all that? Find a bunch of sloths who don't use shampoo. Okay, dimensional analysis can be a little confusing, so let's look at another example. If Calliope flew 800 meters in two minutes... Oh, I can fly a lot faster than that. What is Calliope's rate in kilometers per hour? First, let's write out our original fraction, 800 meters per two minutes. Now, let's multiply by one kilometer per 1,000 meters to convert to kilometers, and by 60 minutes per one hour to convert to hours. We should end up with 800 times 60 on the top and two times 1,000 on the bottom. All of the minutes and meters cancel out, so we're left with 48,000 kilometers per 2,000 hours, which reduces to 48 over 2, or 24 kilometers per hour. Oh, I'd get kicked out of pig pimples if they thought I flew that slow. Don't worry, I won't tell uh, them. Uh, 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 professor. Yes, Todd? I have one more question. See, I have this magical plant. 
And every time I pluck one of its leaves, well, it adds years to my life. Jealous. Oh, cool. That's an example of inverse variation or inverse proportion, where one quantity increases in proportion to another variable decreasing, or vice versa. We can conceptualize inverse variation using the formula x equals k over y, where x and y are the two variables and k is a constant of variation. How many leaves did the plant start with? Uh, 10. And what was your life expectancy? Mm, 80. That's pretty low considering most wizards live forever. Well, you see, there are a lot of uh, wizard battles that really bring down the average. It's sad. Ah, I see. And how many leaves have you removed? Two. I'm trying to be cautious. <gasps> oh, I just ripped them all off at once. I want to live forever. <laughs> what? So you can play more X wand? So, if Todd's plant started with 10 leaves and his life expectancy was 80, we can plug those values into our inverse variation equation to determine the constant K, which will then help us figure out what his life expectancy is now. Let's call leaves x and life expectancy y. So 10 equals k over 80. Throw up the x to find that k equals 800. So to solve for Todd's new life expectancy, we want to solve 8 equals 800 over y. Throw up the x to find that y equals 100. Well, oh, stupendous. Oh. Jealous. I have a question. Every time I temporarily turn Don into a goat, I get happier. That's not a question. And that doesn't seem ethical, but it's an example of direct proportion or variation. That's when one variable increases in proportion to another variable increasing, or one decreases in proportion to another decreasing. The formula for direct variation is x equals ky. Yesterday, I turned Don into a goat nine times, and I felt a 60-point increase in my happiness. I'm so bad. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, each time only lasts for a few minutes. Still, it's taking a real toll on my social life. <laughs> Don't worry, Don. You're still the goat. Let's plug that into our direct variation equation. 9 equals 60k. Divide both sides by 60 to find that k equals 3 over 20. So, how happy will Calliope be if she turns Dawn into a goat 30 times in one day? <gasps> the horror! Well, 30 equals y times 3 over 20. Great! Now simplify the right side by turning y into y over 1 and multiplying the fractions to get 3y over 20. Then throw up the x to get 3y equals 600. Divide both sides by 3, and we see that Calliope will be 200 points happier. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Buckle up. <sighs> oh, well, this back. is taking a dark turn. I think that's enough for one day. Go to Marcus. Just remember, whenever you're dealing with relationships that are preserved in ratios, you want to use a proportion. And also remember, Prepsters, believe in yourself, because I certainly do. Anytime you need to preserve a ratio across different situations, use a proportion. When setting up proportions, make sure that each side matches in structure. Cross multiply any time you have equivalent fractions. Use dimensional analysis if you need to convert units. Inverse variation, x equals k over y. Direct variation, x equals ky. Don't turn your classmates into goats. 